In this video, I'm going to take a look at rational functions and the difference quotient. We're going to simplify the different quotients when given a rational expression, such as this 3 over x. Now, there's lots of different forms of the difference quotient. I'm going to use the one that uses the a plus h, okay, because that's what's being currently used in my textbook. Um, you'll see other ones where this is an x plus h. You'll also see versions where it's x plus delta x. All right, what variables are used really is not important. Uh, the overall implementation of that formula is the same regardless of the variables used. All right, now, because I do have a rational function, what's this going, what is going to happen is it's going to create a complex rational expression. And then you're going to have to simplify the complex rational expression, which is going to make the problem harder. Okay, so we're going to start with this function. And we're going to use this formula. This says to take a plus h and put it into the f function. The only place I have to put that into the f function is right there in the denominator. So then I'm going to have a 3 over that a plus h. All right, now it says minus the function when a is put into the function. So I'm going to put a into the function. All right, so the only place to put a in the function is right there on the bottom, so I have to have a minus for the formula. So minus 3 over a, and then all over the h. All right, so right here is that complex rational expression that I was talking about. All right, because this is a rational function, all right, it's going to create that complex rational expression. All right, now to simplify this, the easiest way to simplify this would be to multiply through by the least common denominators. So I'm going to look at the denominator here, which is a, the denominator here, which is a plus h, and the denominator of just the h, all right, covering this up and just looking at h, the denominator there would be a 1. So my least common denominator is going to be a times a plus h. So I'm going to choose to multiply through by a times a plus h, and that is the least common denominator. Now, when I multiply through by that, I'm going to multiply both terms in the numerator, and then I also need to multiply the bottom by that least common denominator as well. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going to happen. When I multiply these two things, my a plus h and a plus h is going to cross out. That's going to leave me with a 3 and an a, and it's eliminating that fraction, which is what I want to happen. Then it's going to be minus. Now, I'm going to, again, multiply by that least common denominator. This time, the a's get crossed out, which is going to leave me with a 3 times the a plus h. Keep it in mind that that 3 is going to be negative right there. In the bottom, I'm just going to rearrange these, put them in alphabetical order, and, and just leave it as it is because it's just everything being multiplied together. All right, now, keeping in mind this is a negative 3, I'm going to distribute the negative 3, and I'm going to have then a 3a minus a 3a minus a 3h on top. Again, I'm just going to leave this bottom because sometimes uh, distributing on the bottom, uh, it, you just have to turn around and factor because something is going to cross out later on in the problem. So in that denominator, I usually just leave it. All right, looking at this numerator, 3a minus 3a, those two things are going to cross out. Now, I am going to rewrite before I do any more simplifying. I've got a negative 3h left on top, and then I've got an a times an h times an a plus h. All right, again, not distributing because, as you can see, those h's now are going to cross out. If you would have distributed that, it would have been harder to see that the h's would have crossed out. You're then going to have a final answer of a negative 3 over an a times an a plus h. And technically, that right there would be a sufficient answer. If you've got a teacher that wants that a distributed, then it would look like a negative 3 over an a squared plus an a h. Either one of those answers are acceptable. All right, so just one quick example here of how that difference quotient looks when it is applied to a rational function there. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Thanks.